Welcome to July's Leet Code Challenge. Today's problem is construct binary tree from in-order and post-order traversal. Given an in-order and post-order traversal of a tree, construct the binary tree. We're given two lists, one for the in-order and one for the post-order. And we want to return or construct a binary tree from these two lists. Now, we can assume that there are no duplicates in our tree and that's going to be a hint. So why would that be? Why would we not allow duplicates? Okay, so let's go to the whiteboard and try to think about the intuition behind this. So let's first construct a binary tree and see what that would look like. Let's say that this was root one. Uh, we'll go to two. And three. Four, five. Now, what would this look like in order? In order, it's just from left to right, right? Left node, right. And it would look like if we were to do this in a list, something like two, one, four, three, five. This is the in order. Now, what about post order? Well, in post order, if you recall, it's just the left node, right node, and then the root node itself. So that would be something like two, four, five, three, one. All right, so let's think of some things that we have to do. The first thing that we know that we must know is that we're gonna construct this binary tree from the root, right? And the only th list that tells us what the root is gonna be is the post order traversal, this one here. We know that the very last node is gonna be the root. So that's key. This post order traversal list is going to be what's going to allow us to uh, construct from the root first. So why do we need this in order one? Like what's helpful about it? Well, let's try to think of it at just like one node. Say that we start with one, right? And we start with one and say that this is the root. Now we move on to the next node. Number three are given at this one root one, what could we tell using the in order traversal or the in order list? So if we look at one right here and we look at where one is in our in order, from our in order list, we can see that four, three, five is all on the right side of our tree. And two on the left side is our on is on the left side of the tree. So that's big because that tells us what the rest of the binary tree is going to look like. So why not just do some sort of recursive method where we first set the root and pass in whatever is to the right of the root in the in order list. And call that recursively to pass in this in order list because we know that our next root node that we're gonna build is gonna be contained inside this right side, right? Pass right side of the in order. and pass the left side in the left. So pass left. Now, I don't think I'm explaining this very well uh, currently, but let's just imagine now we're on three. So we built one and we pass to the right side because we're going in the opposite order of post order, right? We have to go um, basically node, node, or I'm sorry, right, left node. So here we know that three is gonna be the root and we can see that four is on the left side and, and five is on the right side, right? So I, when we go move on to the next one, we know we can stop here because at five, there's no more things to pass. We've already passed in just the five and there's no more list left to pass. So we can end our recursion there and move on to the left side. At the left side, um, we just keep 
popping off of our of our post order, and that we know that it's going to be four, and that's going to return all the way back here to two. Okay, so this is key. We need both lists. Obviously, if we only have one, we're not going to know where to stop the recursion. We're not going to know when to go to the left or right. Uh, so passing in using the in order list, what's left on the right side and what's left on the left side is going to allow us to know when to end our recursion. So let's go ahead and code this out, see if we could start making sense of it. So let's say we're going to write some sort of helper method. We'll call it recursion and we're going to pass in the in order and the post order. Now the very first thing we need to do is, uh, well, we need, there's a base condition, but we'll skip that for now because we're not totally sure what that should be. And we'll say, uh, first set the root. And the root's gonna be whatever's on the most right of our post order list. So post order, we'll pop off whatever is there and we'll create a tree node. Now we need to pass in what's on the right side of this root node and what's on the left side of this root node into our recursion. And that we're gonna pass that as our in order and we'll pass in the, the current post order, whatever is left, because we popped off the right one, uh, to the right side first and then to the left side. So let's say we're gonna first, first we need to know where this um, root is in the in order list, right? So we could do that by uh, using the um, index method. So what we'll do is say, get the index point of this list at the root value. And since the root value is unique, we know that there's only gonna be one index value. So we'll just call that the mid point. Now we'll say, okay, for the root dot right, pass in the recur recursion and we'll pass in our in order, but only this is going to be the right side. So from mid plus one to whatever's left. And we'll pass in the pre our post order as well. Now we do the very same thing, but do it on the left side. And finally, we return the root. And here we want to pass in um, up to the up to the midpoint. I'm, I'm not sure if it's mid minus one. I think it's just mid. I believe, and that would be it. Now we just need a base condition, and you can see that we're each time we call this recursion, like this is going to get smaller and smaller. Same with the post order. Uh, so it's be something like if we don't have any in order left, or there's no post order left. Then we can just go ahead and return. Now what do we do? We just return our uh, recursion. Since we'll be returning the root, uh, that's gonna return us the binary tree. So we'll just pass in the in order and pass in the post order. All right, so let me see if I messed up anything here. So far it looks good. Let's go ahead and submit that. And there, accepted. So this does work, but it's not optimized because well, not only are we doing this uh, index search, uh, we're also using a lot of extra space by passing passing in like a new list each time. So this actually ends up being a n squared time complexity. We could improve it a little bit um, or significantly. So the way you can do that is rather than uh, doing this search each time, we could make some sort of dictionary. So let's make a mapper. And what we'll do is say for enumerate, or I'm sorry, index value in enumerates the in order. Let's create a dictionary and say mapper for the value is going to equal to the index number. And instead of passing in the <clears throat> uh, a broken up list, why not just pass in the low point and the high point? Of, the left pointer and the right pointer. So we'll, we'll just kind of low and high. And instead of saying if not in order and post order, uh, we could use this left and right pointer to be like, all right, if the uh, low is greater than high, then return. 
and everything else should still basically be the same um, except we will uh, instead of using this we'll use our mapper passing the root value and instead of passing in these lists we're going to pass in uh, for the right side we want the right right so that'd be mid plus one to the high and to the left it would be low to mid minus one it would still be this passing the root now we just pass in zero and the length of either list we'll do the in order because they should be the same size and we'll minus one so let's see if this one works and it does and you can already tell it looks a lot faster and there we go. And this would be a linear time complexity. This would be O of n because uh, we're not um, doing, well, we are doing passing it once to create this mapper. But when we do our search, we don't have to search through the whole list. We'll be using a dictionary. On top of that, we're not using any extra space. So this is um, probably the optimal solution. All right. So thanks for watching my channel. Um, and just remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.